Hello and welcome to the Changemaker series in partnership with Euronews. I'm Annabelle Murphy and over the course of this series we're going to be speaking to some incredibly accomplished women rethinking and reshaping their industries. Today I'm joined with Maxine Williams who is the Chief Diversity Officer at Facebook. Maxine, welcome. Hi, great to be with you. You've had a, an incredibly accomplished and diverse career yourself in broadcast journalism, also in law, and now as a chief diversity officer in, in a big tech company. What's inspired your career? Well, <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, but if I could look at one through line, it has been that I've always been interested in bringing more opportunity to more people into at least getting us somewhere further on the road to justice. So inequality is something which has motivated me and I have found different avenues to address that. Sometimes I was you know, running a human rights organization and so looking at it from a very macro perspective. At some time I was a, a trade union lawyer and so I was helping workers in different areas to get a specific thing which they were fighting for. And now uh, I've been at Facebook for almost eight years at this scale in a digital economy, uh, helping people hopefully to get equal value from our products. What is diversity then in your opinion? The, the word can mean different things in different contexts. But in a corporation, I think that what we are trying to do is to see diversity as a means to achieve the end, which is to serve everyone who uses our products by giving them equal value. So cognitive diversity is what we seek. That is to have teams where people think differently, because we know from the research that if you think differently, it gives you more advantage in solving complex problems. You can see it from different angles. You understand different aspects of it. If everybody thinks the same way, if they're from the same background, they're probably not gonna push or pull. They're not gonna see vulnerabilities. People may not question each other as much in order to get you to a better place. How can a company, you know, small or large, how do they know if they have a fundamental diversity problem? How can they measure that? You could look at, categories for which you have data and say, okay, am I above or below market availability? Now, every human being is incredibly complex. So there are lots of stuff about people that make up their diversity and their assets that you do not have any data on, right? Um, there are very few companies, I would think, that survey everyone that they interview to see, are you an introvert or are you an extrovert? But that difference is important, right? Because people will approach things differently. But there are many companies that do have data around some key differences. So that do have data around gender, race, ethnicity, veteran status, people with disabilities, LGBTQ status. Like there's a lot that you could uh, use to determine, well, where am I in relation to how many people I could have here who would bring us different perspectives because of their different backgrounds. Could you give me a, an example at Facebook where diversity, cognitive diversity, diversity of thought has really allowed you to excel in a particular team or in a product? If I could give you an example, one where we could distill it down and say, right, that's the thing. When Facebook was started, there were only two things you could select in terms of gender, right? Everyone had a profile page and you go in and they'd say, are you male or female? It was completely binary. Once we got more people in our own workforce who were non-binary, who did not identify that way and who understood what it meant to be something different, who understood that that's not how the world is constructed, they allowed us, they provided that insight and allowed us to move to a point where we now allow people in most jurisdictions to select multiple uh, identities, that the way they see themselves matters. I've had people reach out to me since we've made that change and say, wow, I was able to choose who I am. And I could now walk into this room, this digital room, without feeling like the air was sucked out when I showed up because I could be who I am. What tips would you have for people out there that want to create more diverse workforces, but come up against resistance or the old way of doing things? What advice would you have for them? As long as you do this work, you will have to do education as well. So for instance, one piece of advice I would say is that as much as people think that they get it, 
it is always important to continue to do training, uh, to continue to do unconscious bias training, to make what is unconscious conscious, and to teach as a part of that the skills and the methods to counteract biases. But it is not enough to simply focus on changing hearts, right? Uh, changing minds. You actually also need to put systems in place that limit the operation of bias. You have to have requirements in place so that you get the behavior you are seeking, which by the way, is the behavior that's going to allow everyone's potential to be shown and to be leveraged so you can build better products and do better at your business. You want an environment, for instance, where people can speak out because then you can hear their opinions and then you get the benefit of the asset they bring. I would also say the other big thing is to start right away. It is like the, the most ridiculous assumption, the thing that we'll get to that later on. Uh, every step you take away from it is a step that makes it harder to make progress. So as early as you can, start a focus on this. Even if you don't have the resources to hire a dedicated chief diversity officer, you can start with uh, an initiative, a project, a voluntary committee. What skills, soft and hard, do you look for when you're hiring at Facebook? Um, when I'm hiring on my team, I definitely look for people who are analytical. That's really big. Like, are you looking at the data? Can you work well with others? You know, I just described that we take a very collaborative uh, approach to problem solving. And so people who play well in the sandbox with others who are able to listen to other people's points of view, um, that really matters. And similarly, actually, um, when you're listening to other points of view, you have to be able to um, sort of process when something doesn't go your way or where your point of view is not the one that leads. So, um, you know, I, I look at resilience and openness and humility somewhat. Thank you very much uh, for your time, Maxine, and contributing to this invaluable discussion around diversity. Thank you so much for having me. It was great to be here.